denied our father and our lord we come in the stillness of this moment to say thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies we thank you for how your hand was with us from the rocking of ourselves to sleep on last night to our 
rising early this morning, still in our right mind with blood running warm in our many names. Father, we thank you for this precious opportunity to speak the word of life to your people. And we ask, Heavenly Master, that you will endow us with the truths of your word, where which we might grow and to be more like you in this present age. Father, my prayer is that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart shall be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And I ask these things in the name of the risen Savior, who is Jesus Christ, our Lord. In his name we do pray, and all God's children said, amen. Amen and amen. We give honor to the presence of the Lord on this morning, this beautiful Sunday morning, who for reasons of his own has favored me to serve my generation and by his will to his son Jesus whom we are indebted for delivering from a life of sin and shame and to the comforter, our keeper, our sustainer, and our God. To my sisters in the ministerial bond by way of the Reverend Teresa Wilson, the Reverend Jennifer Weston, the evangelist Ann Jones, uh, the evangelist Rebecca Wilson, to Minister Gloria Thompson, to our ministry of deacons, our ministry of trustees, and to all my father's children that make Zion benevolent the best church on this side of heaven. We say, God bless you, and may heaven forever smile upon you. I'm asking for your prayers this morning. You can hear that my voice is a little bit raspy. I had, uh, we were uh, preaching kind of hard here over the last couple days by way of virtually. We had a Zoom Bible study, and we had a couple services online, so my voice is, is fading fast which means I have a few minutes to preach and I'm going to use them all. So for those of you that have your Bibles, I invite you to join me in the gospel according to Mark. We know that last Sunday was Resurrection Weekend and this is the immediate Sunday thereafter, some seven days since Jesus ascended into the heavenly clouds. Once you have your Bibles, I invite you to join me to Mark chapter 15 which is the final chapter, excuse me, Mark 16. Mark chapter 16, it follows the Gospel of Matthew. It precedes the Gospel of Luke for your hearing. We're going to read Mark 16, beginning at verse number 15. And the Word of God reads on this wise from the rustic language of the King James Version at Mark 16 and 15. It says, and he, this being Jesus, said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. The final verse says in verse number 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues and all god's children said amen i want you to turn to your neighbor left or right and tell them go <laughs> uh, just go uh, just go i've uh, been reminiscent this is my 20th year in gospel ministry i turned 39 in march and have been preaching from the time that I was 19 years old. I spent two decades traveling the country, preaching the gospel to all that would hear. And I'll say as the saints of yesteryear said, I've been running for Jesus now a long time and I ain't got tired yet, but I've seen some things that have caused me to be mindful of my current positioning because church has changed from the time that I started preaching shortly after, she would be before my 20th birthday, up until now that I see on the eve of my 40th birthday, people are afraid, and I say people, I mean preachers, are ashamed, almost ashamed to tell the truth of the gospel experience because they feel like they're not going to be compensated by the churches that they serve. They're afraid to go into the highways and the hedges to take care of the poor, the widows, and to tell people that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God through eternal life is Christ Jesus. It seems now the churches are more preoccupied with making sure that their social media numbers hit. And I see the irony of what we're doing this morning, uh, that their social media numbers hit and not so much that their impact is felt in the communities in which they serve. 
And we have to be reminded every now and again that the Lord has to take us back to where he brought us from at times to remind us of where he wants us to go. And it's in this passage of scripture that Jesus had already faced the challenge of Calvary. He had already had the nails in his hands and in his feet pierced in his side, the crown of thorns placed on his head. He'd already been spat on. He had already had seen those that were walking with him betray him. He had already seen the disciples scatter. He had already been arrested. He had already been buried in a borrowed tomb. He had already resurrected. And now he is here, the Bible says, and he appears to them. And it's there that the Bible says that the people that saw him didn't know that he had arisen. So in this passage, he gives them some simple instructions that I'm just going to give the saints of God on this beautiful Sunday morning. The Bible says, first of all, he says, I want you to go into all the world. And he says, I want you to do one thing. He says, I want you to preach the gospel to every creature. Tell somebody it's time to preach. We've got to learn how to be willing to tell people the truth of the charismatic gospel experience to let them know that gospel by its literal definition means good news. And sometimes, saints of God, you got to tell somebody the good news of what Jesus has done for you. You got to tell him that he brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You got to tell him, tell the people that he brought you up off of your sickbed, that he put money in your pocket, that he put shoes on your feet, that he put a shout in your song. That he made a way when there seemed to be no way. You got to tell people that he's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He's a light in the darkness and that's exactly who he is. You got to tell somebody that the same God that you serve is the one that not only blessed mama and grandma, but he's carrying you and your children. You got to preach the gospel to say that the God that you serve is a healer in the time of sickness, a peacemaker in the time of trouble, a way maker in the time where there seems to be no way. He's a peace in the turbulence. And storm. You got to let people know and you got to say it from your chest. There comes a time when people are willing to say everything that they think people want to hear, but not necessarily what they need to hear. In these last days, we've got to go past the conversation and conjecture and tell the truth of the experience that one day this world that we know is going to be no more and Jesus is soon to return. And it's incumbent upon us, not just the preachers, but also the saints that had experience with Jesus. You got to go and tell somebody that I don't just come to church on Sunday mornings to hear a skinny preacher from Barnville to encourage me and to lift me up. I come because I've had an experience with this resurrected Savior that lets me know that when it's all said and done, that he believes exactly what he said in his word in John 14, that he's got a place prepared for me. You've got to learn how to preach, even if it's in your own living room, to let your children and your grandchildren know that if you live in my house, that we're going to serve the Lord in here. When you go on your job, that you take the Lord with you everywhere that you go, that you ain't going to lie, cheat, or Steal, that you're going to walk in the fullness of God. You got to learn how to preach, whether you went to seminary or not, to live and to preach, not by the way that you talk, but necessarily by the way that you do. You got to learn how to throw your arms around people that you know that can't stand you. Smile in the midst of your circumstance, shout in the midst of your storm, and say, If God be for me, can nobody be against me? He said, I want you to go and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, Fast forwarding a little bit, Paul tells us when he's speaking to Timothy about the disposition of the people that we're going to be preaching to. I've been preaching a long time, but you don't have to take it from me. Everybody that you preach to ain't going to want to hear what you got to say. <laughs> There's some people that have come to church every Sunday morning and get, won't get no closer to God than they will to the neighbor and they're sitting next to them. But you don't let that be your testimony. It'll be an awful case for you to come to church, sing in the choir. Be a musician or a ministry leader and do all these things in the service of the Lord. Then when your time comes to be laid across this altar, people got to find good things to say about you because they know you're going to hell. I want my work that I do to be the thing that speaks for me. He tells them, I don't want you to just go into the gospel and to preach to every creature. He says, I need you to make sure that they believe because when they believe, the Bible says, he that believeth shall be saved, but him that believeth not shall be damned. It's an awful thing when the preacher is placed in a position where he can't even tell people nowadays that if you sin and live a life full of sin, you're going to hell. 
People don't want to hear that kind of preaching anymore. They want you to give them four steps to happiness. They want you to give them three steps of financial freedom. They want you to be able to shout on cue when the musicians hit the right chord. They want you to give away things that will benefit them when they're in trouble, but they don't want you to tell them that if you keep drinking, if you keep sleeping around, if you keep shucking and jiving, you're going to hell. People don't want to hear that these days. But you got to preach the truth of the experience. And it's there that the Bible says that him that believes shall be saved. And I want you to go back over your own spiritual journey and remember the day, the night, or the hour when the Lord saved your soul. This is when Mother Edmonds was get up and run around the sanctuary, but every now and again, you got to be reminded that you didn't get to the station of where you are by yourself because it was Jesus, not you, that took Calvary's hill, that had nails in his hands and in his feet. Blood and water pierced from his side. And the power of resurrection was resting upon him when early that Sunday morning, he got up out of the grave. It was Jesus, not you, that went and took the keys of hell, death, and the grave and said, all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. And you have to realize that we're benefactors of that, but you didn't do the work yourself. And the Bible says that all you got to do is to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Saints of God, I just preached a simple message. I'm preaching a simple message to you this morning to let you know that all you got to do is just go and tell somebody. You have to tell somebody about how God brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And then he says that there is going to be evidence to them that follow them that believe. He said, in my name, they're going to cast out devils and they're going to speak in new tongues. And all that simply means is that there is power in the name of Jesus. Grab somebody by the hand and say that there's still power in the blood of the Lamb. And every now and again, you've got to be reminded while you might not know Greek, Hebrew, or Aramaic, you know how to call him by his name. And every now and again, when you might not know how to pray your way out of what you're going through, you know how to slip your hands toward heaven and just say Jesus on the inside. And I want you to understand that the old saints have a ring of truth when they say that the more you call him, the more that he responds. It's in that end that I get encouraged to let somebody know that even when I'm going through the dark night of my soul, when I've been fighting battles all night long, when I've been praying on every side, I still have something on the inside of me that tells me that I can make it just a little bit further. Isn't that in that I can be encouraged in knowing that if God be on my side, that whatever I'm going through, whatever I might be faced with, is something that can propel me to go on to the next step. Because I understand that every battle that I go into, that I've got the power of God standing behind me and the angels of God walking before me. Grab somebody by the hand and say, just go. You might be worried about whether you're going to go back to your job, whether your bills are going to get paid, whether you're going to be able to see your doctor to get your new prescriptions, to be able to get the aches and pains out of your body, to be able to return back to normalcy in the time of the pandemic. I just want you to do the one thing that the Lord says for you to do. I just want you to go and tell somebody that it's all in the hands of the mighty God that we serve. Saints of God, that when you learn how to worship in spite of your pain, when you learn how to shout in spite of your difficulties, the Lord has a way of pushing you from one level to the next. If you'll put one foot in front of the next and say, as long as I keep my hand in God's hands, as long as I keep my mind stayed on Him, as long as I keep hooked up to the Master's will, I know that everything is going to be all right. I feel like preaching in here. Tell somebody all you got to do is go. When the enemy says that you can't make it, when the devil is pressing you on every side, Put one foot in front of the next and say, I'm going on in Jesus' name. He said, in my name, people are going to see the evidence of everything. He said, you're going to be able to cast out devils. Literally, what you got to do is learn how to say these three or four words and say, in the name of Jesus, whatever it is it might be going through in my life, I know that the God that I serve has given me a name which is above every name. That at the very name of Jesus, that every knee has got to bow and every tongue has got to confess. You got to learn how to say in the name of Jesus, every miracle that's going to manifest in my life is going to come forth. But it's not anything that I'm doing, but literally it's the power that's working in me.
me. For we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not unto ourselves. It's not me, but the God that I serve working in me. And every now and again, you've got to say, I've just got to go on in Jesus' name. I'm pressing on to higher heights into deeper depths. New heights I gain every day. I'm going on in the name, in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus that every victory is going to be seen. Every prayer is going to be actualized. Every power that is on the inside of us is going to be brought out. But you can't do it on your own. He said you got to realize that there are going to be adversaries. Paul said a great door and an effectual has been opened to me. He said, but there are adversaries there. I want you to understand, saints of God, that there are going to be devils at your open door. For every place that you try to go, for every level of grace that you try to see, the enemy is not going to clock out. He's not going to stop simply because you get saved, because you get your life together. What the Lord wants you to know is that you've got power on the inside of you and you've got to keep moving forward. Keep pressing forward. Keep pushing. Keep praying. Keep fasting. And little by little as you meet progression, God is going to allow you to see the light. He's going to allow you to see the victory. He's going to allow you to see the great things happen in your life. But you got to keep going, saints. you got to keep pushing. you got to keep propelling, keep praying, keep praising. What we do on our Zoom Bible studies, and I pray that this is the last one that we have. I want to be able to come back, to throw my arms around your neck, to hug you, to touch you, to have fellowship with you. But as we were talking on Zoom, it was amazing what the Lord was able to do in John chapter 13. We told us a couple weeks ago when Jesus was preparing to take Calvary's hill, he brought the 12 disciples together. The Bible says that he pulled out a towel. He pulled out a basin and filled it with water and began to wash the feet of his disciples. And what stayed with me is that one of the 12 that would later betray him. Jesus took out the basin, he took out the towel, and he washed the feet of Judas. The Bible says that while Jesus was preparing around John 13 and two, it says the devil entered into Judas, and he already knew then what he would do. But the Lord was so mission-minded that even though he was about to be betrayed by somebody who was in his inner circle, he kept going anyway. You miss me, come here. Sometimes you get frustrated. Sometimes the hell hounds press you on every side. Sometimes the devil begins to uh, creep into your, into your life. And you see his hands starting to move, but you have to do what Jesus did. He went anyhow. Keep going. Keep going. And if you don't know this Jesus, if you haven't met him, I'd love to introduce you to him. The Bible says, for if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, this is in the book of Romans, but thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. And this morning, if there's one that does not know the Lord, salvation can be yours. The power of God is still available. And I want to pray with you about that this morning. For those of you that are saved and are still challenged with life's calamities, we can pray together. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the instruction to still go. Master, we ask that you give us the power to propel. That you give us the ability to preach even when there are messages that the world might not receive. You said to your disciples in times of trouble and frustration, you, you told them, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. Lord, I ask that you help us to realize that we're overcomers, that we're more than conquerors through him that loves us. Father, we pray that you would separate us from our sins. Help us to walk in your righteousness. It's our prayer. Father, I pray for everyone that might need a special touch from you. You know what they stand in need of the most. Lord, we ask that you would bless, that you would touch, that you would heal, and that you would deliver. That every step of the way, as we go from our vision to our victory, we'll be so careful to give your name all the honor, your name all the glory, and your name all the praise. And we ask these things in the name of the risen Savior. Who is Jesus Christ our Lord? In his name we do pray. 
And all God's children said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. We want to thank God for you watching with us this morning. We want to encourage you that if this ministry blesses you, that you'd be so much time to give. We've got officers out front right now. They're going to be here from 11 to 1230. It's a little after 11 now, but they'll be here until 1230. They're going to be receiving offerings, giving out DVDs and CDs on today's service as we are recording live. If you want a copy of it, if you need prayer, we want you to come up. Just come to your car, roll down your window. We want to pray with you. Our deacons are in masks and in gloves. We want to reach out to you. If there's a way that our ministry can help you, let us know. We want you to join us by way of Facebook, Instagram. For those of you that have Instagram, I'm Poor Country Preacher on IG. I want you to follow me. I want to post these messages. We've got a Twitter account that's semi-active. We, we're reaching out to those that need to hear it. We've got a YouTube channel that we want you to subscribe to. And to watch these series of services, not just these series, but as long as we can think about it, we want you to join us in worship. If you'd be so inclined to give, you can do that online as well. We've got our campaigns through GiveLify, which is our church name, and also through Cash App, where it's dollar sign, Zion Benevolent. If you feel so inclined to give, please do so. You can also bring your offerings to our sanctuary, or you can mail them to our church in East Over. If our church can bless you in any way, we want you to know our, our church's P.O. Box is in East Over, actually. Our church is in Hopkins. Now stay with me. I apologize. But if you need anything from us that we might be able to offer, just let us know that our doors are always open to you. Be encouraged. Best church on this side of heaven. God bless you, and we love you. Choir, will you sing for us? My hallelujah belongs. 